I was an extremist when it came for the traditions of my father. And so, brothers and sisters, if we want to see the power of God work in our lives, if we want to be able to experience the Holy Ghost fully, then we got to begin to look at what am I really holding on to and what am I really practicing? Am I practicing through faith the word of God, acting on his promises, or am I living by and going by some tradition, some teaching of men? Amen. I want you to know that I've been around not that long. I heard Bishop Wright say 40-some years. Amen. It's only been almost 26 for me. But the time that I have been around when I first got saved, they used to tell me, and having believed, say, oh, apostolic, there's no one like us. We are different from everybody else. We got all the truth. We got all this and all that. Amen. And, and, and as I begin to grow in this thing and begin to look on the other side of the fence, I begin to look over there and then look over here. And I begin to say, wait a minute. I, I thought we were different. I thought that they said there was nobody like apostolic, but it looked like really we just took a lot of their things and brought them into the apostolic church. And like some say, put an apostolic twist to it and call it apostolic. But we really took it from somewhere else. And all it was, it was a tradition that didn't work for them. And surely it won't work for us. So then, my brothers and sisters, we have to get to the place as what the Bible told us to do, to come out from among them. And in the book of Revelation, the word calls and says, come out of her. And that's what I want to deal with tonight. If we go to the book of Revelation, chapter 18, and verse number 4. And he said, I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues for her sins have reached unto heaven and God have remembered her iniquities but look he said reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works her works now when the bible says her we got to take a deeper look at her who is she? Who is this her? Let us look at Revelation chapter 17 and verse number 5. And upon her forehead was written, was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now, here, when it says a name written, on her forehead, mystery. mystery. Now, the word mystery is not a part of the title. It is a descriptive reference to the title. Right. Whenever you talk about mystery, of course we know it's something that was hidden in the Old Testament and revealed in the New Testament. Absolutely. Mystery. The Bible talks about many mysteries. The mystery of the kingdom of God. The mystery of the blindness of Israel. The mystery of the timing of the rapture of the church. The mystery of the church. The mystery of iniquity. There's many mysteries the Bible talk about. But here it's talking about the mystery of Babylon the great. Now when it mentions Babylon, we're not talking about Babylon the city along the Euphrates River. We are not talking about Babylonia as a nation. But what ancient Babylon was religiously, this woman is religiously. And it says, the mother of harlots, of harlots. A harlot, spiritually, when we speak, is someone who is unfaithful to God. When you talk about a harlot, you're talking about someone who worships idols. Yes. Someone, amen, that is devoted to something false. Jeez. Someone who is has a decadent worship, a worship that is corrupt and a worship that is immoral. And so this woman, a harlot, an evil, wicked woman, amen, represents, amen, that filthiness, amen, that is spread throughout the world in deceiving people through their false religions. If we would go to uh, 
uh, verse number one of the same chapter. I'd like to bring out a few things here. And there came one of the seven angels which had seven veils, vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show thee unto thee the great judgment, the judgment of the great whore. There she is again. That sitteth upon many waters. If you scroll down to verse 15 very quickly, and it explained to us what the waters is. What the waters are. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest. Where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. In other words, this harlot, her influence, the, the way she has affected people has affected the world worldwide in scope. Her activity has influenced and has encompassed every land, every language, and every people. When we talk about this woman, this whore, this prostitute, this harlot, this woman here who has a abominations, a man that has filled her cup. If we go back to uh, uh, chapter verse one, I'm sorry, verse one, same chapter. <laughs> yeah, verse one. I missed I miss you because I said chapter 17 and one. Yeah, there. Thank you. <laughs> and so he says, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Talk about her worldwide influence with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. That's politically. Then it says, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk. Still dealing with influence, how she's affected and persecuted, destroyed and corrupt folks. Made drunk with the wine of her fornications. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Uh-oh. Full of names of blasphemy. Having seven heads and ten horns. It, you can leave it at verse three. I'm going to deal with that for a moment. And, and then I want to slip down to verse number nine. Yeah, right here. Thank you. Uh -huh. Now this woman, when the Bible talks about women in the Bible. In the book of Revelation, three kinds of women are mentioned. If we look at. Revelation 12 and 1, it tells us about one kind of woman. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Almost similar to the dream that Joseph had. But here it's talking about the believing remnant of Israel. This, that's who that woman is. In Revelation Chapter 19 and 7, there's another kind of woman. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife have made herself ready. And to her was granted that she would, should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Now this is the bride of Christ. <laughs> whoever is a part and I know I'm a part of that uh, the bride of Christ but the woman in Revelation 17 and 3 I believe it is this is a different kind or, or four I'm sorry yeah three thank you and he said I saw a woman sit this was a harlot a prostitute representing false religion now let me just say something here a moment because when we talk about the woman and the beast, there is much debate about this, much discussion when we look in the book of Revelation and deal with this. And we know that a lot of things we will not know until the actual time of fulfillment, especially when you're dealing with prophecy. But there are some glimpses, and we do get some revelation and some understanding in many things. And here, many people attribute the woman to the Pope and the beast to the imperial political Rome, cuts the city, seven hills, and so on. But I have a different outtake on it, different perspective, different viewpoint, just like share for a point of information with you. That this woman, I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, 
having seven heads and ten horns. Let's go down to verse number nine. Hallelujah. The beast. And here is the mind with have wisdom. Now we want to find out about these seven heads. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And that's where many people get, you know, Imperial Rome because of the city with seven hills. But I have a different take on this. Because when the Bible talks about mountains, the Bible is talking about kingdoms. If we will go to Daniel chapter 2 and verse 34. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, Gentile kingdoms, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer. Threshing floors and the wind carrying them away that no place was found for them. Uh, I lost my place. <laughs> and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a what? A great mountain, a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Let's go down to verse 44. Remember that great mountain, that stone that became a great mountain. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a what? Kingdom, that mountain, which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to another people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all those kingdoms and it shall stand forever. And David also talked about his kingdom being a mountain. And so we can say at least the Bible lets us know when it talks about mountains, it talks about kingdoms. And so if we go back to Revelation chapter 17 and verse number 9. And, there, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains or seven kingdoms, which has seven kings on which the woman sit. Religion and government. And the, there are these there are seven kings. Five are fallen. One is. And the other is not yet to come. Now just for consideration, I would like to give you five kingdoms that I believe have fallen. The five kingdoms. Number one, because when we look at this, this, the main persecution has to do with the church and the children of Israel. And so when we look through the ages and look at kingdoms and those that have rose up and came up against the nation of Israel before the church was born, the first place we find it is in uh, Exodus when we deal with the Pharaoh, whose name was called Tutmos, which most theologians, the third, which most theologians believe that's what his name was. He was the one, the Pharaoh, that rose and knew not Joseph. And what did he do? He tried to eliminate exterminate the children of Israel through killing 